So we have Ross Davies from Indiana University, and Ross, you're going to talk about searching for techno signatures through network analysis. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, thanks for joining in this presentation, and um, I thank the workshop organizers for giving me the opportunity to conduct it here at the workshop. Um, what I'm talking about today is searching for techno signature, techno signatures through network analysis, and. Um, this, is, this was inspired by my participation at the 2018 Techno Signatures Workshop. And uh, it's, it's an emerging method. It's, I, I've been working on it with a research team uh, for about a year now. So it's, it's still work in progress, but what I'm showing you today is just more of the workable aspects of it. And uh, just a, a quick overview here. I'll just I'll talk about the researchers, the research team I'm with, and uh, I'll, I'll go into some basics about network analysis and then taking network analysis and applying it to techno signatures and then just uh, if, there, if there's some time at the end, maybe a conclusion Q&A. So. And as, as far as the, the team I'm with, it's, it's a, quite an interdisciplinary team. Um, my role, I'm affiliated with Indiana University. My background is in information science and sociology. And with this network analysis, I, I just work, you know, in a sense, as a generalist with it. And the, the other uh, researchers I work with, such as Greg Helberg from Caltech uh, with their Department of Astronomy, he is working with applying this to a, a SETI project uh, right now. And then... Uh, also, Caleb Jones, he works for Walt Disney, and he handles a lot of the software programming, working with Python, with uh, processing the data, and also with the visualizations that we have. So it's, it's an interdisciplinary team here. Um, some of you probably are, are familiar with network analysis, or some of you may have vaguely heard about it just some basics. It's just, it's a method of understanding a phenomenon in terms of the structuring relationships of its elements, where the elements represented as nodes or points and the relationships between them as edges, lines. And uh, in network analysis, uh, there's some statistical tools you can use that are especially tailored for network analysis. And these are along the lines of, or, or akin to measures of central, central tendency uh, kind of like the mean or average, uh, and these would be like deg degrees analysis, community modularity analysis, hits analysis, and so forth. And applications you'd usually see in uh, where you traditionally see network analysis used, although not exclusively, would be social sciences, business, biology, computer science. And I'm just going to go uh, quickly here through some just a few examples. Uh, before I get into the, the network of techno signatures, is here's an example of a social network with a Twitter account. And you can see this overall network and all those nodes there are just, are pictures like from uh, Twitter accounts. And then you can see the, uh, there's different colors in the network and those different colors represent how those networks are, or sub networks you might say, among the overall network are organized by their, uh, uh, a common interest, like the blue one on the kind of toward the right side there. That's a lot of those have to deal with space or space science because there's some there that deal with like NASA. And then over next to that is the green subnetwork, which is there's some connections to the space one, but it's more commercial. I got a uh, like image there of Bill Gates. There's more commercial, uh, philanthropic, more more on that side, getting more out in the private sector, and then. It gets a bit looser and you go out here to the purple and the pink and those, those are more distant sub networks that still have some loose connections. That's an example in the social network. And here's a, uh, in, in terms of business or economics, here's a flight network of a US airline. And on the image on the right, you can see that's a, a map there with the continental US. And if we, we were to go on the left-hand side and we just see, just see the flight connections, you can see, uh, all the nodes and edges, and you can see the, the bigger red dots there, the bigger nodes, those are hubs like Chicago or Atlanta. And uh, I'll talk more about hubs later because that's a key aspect of with this network analysis. 
And then we go on to NASA, NASA Interplanetary Space Networks, and you know, like with the Mars rover, and also uh, with the uh, going a bit more back in the past with the Voyager and the and the Pioneer space missions, like like that image there on the right, that shows going out, you know, bird's eye view of the solar system and the, these networks with the Pioneer and the Voyager. And the key thing with the one of the key things with network analysis here is these aren't just networks in terms of radio networks or communication networks. It's, it's also navigation networks. If you're gonna send like the Mars rover to Mars, well, you gotta know where its position is at, you gotta navigate. So we're not talking strictly of just communication networks for radio signals, but they could also apply to, to navigation or non-radio. And a, a model that you know, we, we work from here is the, uh, the Drake equation. And uh, as far as, especially with the term on the, on the terms on the right hand side with F sub I, the, the fraction of plants that would develop intelligent life, uh, especially operationalizing or trying to measure that. And a research question would be where in space would a techno signature most likely be found? So then that's what the, where the network analysis can come in. And also an interrelated question is how would a potential ET space network with techno signatures, how would that most likely emerge? And when we're talking about uh, networks here is uh, you, you can look at various kinds of techno signatures, waste heat, artificial illumination, artificial atmospheric constituents, megastructures, uh, so it's 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 non-radio as well as the radio aspects, and in the current uh, analysis that we're doing with this one study project, we're using the exoplanets host star as a as the node because we're working across interstellar distances. So we're using the the, the planet's host star as as uh, as a node. And that, when I say planet, I'm, I'm the data we're using is from the the exoplanets and the the NASA Exoplanet Archive. We're using the data from there. And then, uh, and as far as the network edge, uh, what that is, is uh, this gets a bit more complex to work with versus just a network node is that uh, to us in this, in this analysis, we're, we're defining a, a network edge. It's a hypothetical navigation or communication pathway between exoplanets or exoplanet systems, host stars. And you can see we have these on the right-hand right, right -hand side there. Uh, we can do two-dimensional, two three-dimensional visualizations with this. And this is, these are just some uh, stills from that. And the, the figure on the top, you, it's a, this term we use, this max edge network. If you go out seven light years, like say from the sun, you'll, you'll develop edges going out to so many stars. But if we increase that max distance or max edge, you see there in the, the the bottom, the figure on the bottom, that it, it go on the bottom right, it goes out even further. We can get a bigger network. So, and with having to do with network edges, it's what we have a we have a network fitting. We use a network fitting algorithm, and in this this current analysis, we're we're working with a single fitted component network. And when we say single fitted component, it means we're we, we just want to go, say, from the sun to Alpha Centauri on out to the next star without skipping a beat. We, we're going, it's a single component. We're, we're not uh, skipping from one star over to this one way over here. We're trying to develop a single component. But we use, and the max distance isn't, it's not to be confused with uh, a radial distance like from the network center point to its outermost edge. It has to do more with edge length, the length of a given edge. And we use a uh, Python software program. It's a point processing toolkit or PPTK, which is a, a Python platform that's uh, especially tailored toward rendering 2D or 3D uh, point visualizations. We do that. And of key interest is uh, when we develop hubs, we want to find hubs in these inner uh, stellar, or I should say these potential ET space networks or exoplanetary space networks. And I'll go through some quick examples here. Uh, James Webb Space Telescope, for example, even though that's in the future, this can just highlight some possibilities. And I'll, I'll talk a bit about the, net, the 
this Nino Far City project, the one we're currently working on, and, and I'll uh, show what we've done with the entire NASA exoplanet archives, all 4,000 plus exoplanets, uh, well, as of the day that we had back in October 2019. Uh, the, with the James Webb Space Telescope, you can see here over off to the right, uh, from the current study project, you can see this looks like a network there with all kinds of nodes and edges, different colors. That's that's a network analysis we did of 96 exoplanets. It's at, we go by their host stars, but we're but we're as a proxy. But those are the 96 exoplanets, and you can see that the uh, there's a hub up there where the green this green sub network, the purple. There's kind of a pink there. It might be hard to see, but it's a uh, it's it's up there in that figure just to the right there, that you can see a hub and and then on down just below that there's a more of a skeletal outlier network there in red and that has the reason we we came up with that network there why that manifested itself is because of just sample bias because there's only so many planets uh, in the NASA exoplanet archive so if we had more planets. Uh, more data on more exoplanets, then we could have a more fuller network. So, but anyways, you, you, I mean, what you could do is you can, with those 96 exoplanets, you can find the hub, uh, just analogous to like that airlines, example with the U.S. Airlines, you find that hub, and there you could probably fire, find a higher concentration of techno signatures, especially if you got a, an advanced civilization or an intelligent civilization. And then within there, you can find within that node, then you can look for exoplanets, look for techno signatures, non radio waste heat, artificial atmospheric uh, constituents, and so forth, megastructures. And this, this is the uh, Neen and Far SETI. Now, it's a French radio telescope. I know we're talking today about non radio, but I, I'm just merely showing this is. Uh, the, the network, we came up with these targeted 96 exoplanets, and uh, many of them are Jupiter kind of like planets. They're not necessarily Earth-like planets. Uh, but anyway, these, are, these 96 exoplanets, this is the network we came up with. The one that was on the one on the previous slide, you can see on the figure to the right, there's that hub right there, and then uh, where the green and the blue and the purple. So that if we were looking for a techno signature, we would start there first. It's not to say you disregard other locations, but that hub would be a place to start. And this very network here, you could take it, and if you wanted to look, setting aside radio techno, techno signatures, if you wanted to look for non-radio, you could do that just as well. And you, the, the thing with network analysis here with, with these, you know, look, developing these potential ET uh, space networks or exoplanetary networks is you can you can uh, use the network analysis with other methods to triangulate in on where these techno signatures could likely be. Um, like you could take the you could do the network analysis, identify the where the hub is or one of the hubs, and then you can use some other uh, method within the hub. Maybe you can use some type of uh, what they call a syzygy or with there could be like two exoplanets over in that hub that are aligned with Earth, and maybe you're looking for some effects related to that syzygy or that three planet alignment with Earth and alignment there. And maybe some type of techno signatures, like say with this, like uh, analogous to like say when our sun, it ha there's a solar eclipse, and you could see aspects of the sun's atmosphere, like the corona, that you otherwise wouldn't readily see without an eclipse. So maybe something like that, especially if you're talking about in context of non radio techno signatures. And here's uh, the NASA exoplanet archive. This is all 4,000 exoplanets, confirmed exoplanets, as of October 2019. And you can see on the figure to the right, in the middle, Earth is, our solar system is in the middle of that paint splatter, you might say. We're in the middle, in that, that purple jet you, seen, you see going off to the uh, lower right, that's the Kepler field. And all of it's in purple. A lot of the Kepler field is in purple because it's just this, because the data is just closely limited to just that Kepler field. We did find some subnetworks in there within the Kepler field. 
but that shows an example. And then this uh, other software we got with the Python program, we could do, uh, these are image stills from a, a 3D rendering where you can uh, rotate, tilt, pan, zoom, and, and we can look at the network. We can, the image on the right, you can see the Kepler field going out to the upper left. We can tilt and rotate it around. You can see it going up to the upper right. So there's ways you can work with visualizations with this network analysis, uh, help, especially when you're trying to, you got a lot of big data looking for techno signatures. This is a good way of looking at it visually in, a, in addition to just looking at just, you know, just uh, flat files or numbers and so forth. And uh, con contributions to the field, you know, just improved uh, accuracy in finding techno signatures greater accuracy in reaching a shelling point, shelling point being the mutual realization of how we and the ET can find each other. If they're doing network analysis and we're doing it, well, there's that getting closer to a shelling point. And also it's promoting interdisciplinary research and uh, from various fields. And this was, and just a corollary to that, especially if you're talking about not just SETI, but outside of SETI in, in an interdisciplinary context is, uh, is Freeman Dyson's first law of SETI investigations, which is every search for alien civilizations should be planned to give interesting results, even when no aliens are discovered yet. So it's it's not just for SETI, which which that that's a key purpose, but also if there's other uh, scientific contributions outside of SETI that it can help, that's a plus too. So. And other than that, that just concludes my. Uh, presentation here on searching for technical signatures through network analysis.